Hello, welcome back. Um, yeah, we have Henry with us. Thank you very much for coming on, Henry. Hello. Um, <laughs> um, so Henry is a Samba first year, which if you, you, you've you sort of watched in the past, you'll know that me, Kat and Seb are all part of Samba, which is the CDT here at Bath. Um, and so Henry's one of the latest willing victims. Um, and you're in this your own residue. experiment. <laughs> the ah. experiment. <laughs> Uh, so you you joined this year, yeah? September. Yeah, September. Gosh. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, so how's it going so far? Fine. Fine. Mm. Fine. Yeah. Still here. Yeah. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. It's nice to do some different mathematics as part of the MS and what I was doing previously. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what sort of stuff are you doing like right now? Like with this different maths. So previously, I'm sure we'll talk about my interests broadly mm-hmm. line in like fluid dyna- dynamics and stuff I'm doing. Obviously, undergrad, I did lots of fluid dynamics and PDE stuff, lots of numerics. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I did, like, no probability after my first year, mm-hmm. so I'm now doing some probability and statistics mm-hmm. and learning what a Markov chain is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> What is a Markov of chain? chain. <laughs> don't don't come on here yeah. and make bold statements like that, Henry. I don't know what it is. <laughs> to, like, back it up. <laughs> Just connect things up and then walk along them. Fair graph, sort of, I think. I think so, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I think if it's Markovian, it only depends on the time step before. So if it's non Markovian, it's like a sure. multiple step chain kind of thing, is my understanding. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I've heard those words before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So even though I think it's a concept in probability, yeah, you can think it's, of like it's, other things in terms of are they Markovian yeah, or so are they like, non-Markovian. You can think about stuff as like, oh, I'm going to walk left or right with a half probability and things mm-hmm. connect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then if your next step left or right depends on what you did two steps ago and not just one, then it's not Yeah, please don't shout at us if you know anything about this. <laughs> yeah, we are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I think, think. Uh, maybe. So, yeah. 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 No one in chat is correcting. No, it's good. So therefore, we, we are right. right. Yes. Perfect. Like, no, you, you've had your chance, that's it. <laughs> moving on. Somebody change the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, so, yeah, you mentioned um, your undergrad. Yes. Tell us. So, I did Discuss. my undergrad here at Bath, which right. is where Sand is located. So, I did the MMAP uh, program, which is essentially the same as the non-masters program mm-hmm. except you get access and a force to do level four modules and then a master's year-long master's project in your final year i did my master's project on non-linear wave mechanics with cat supervisor paul mm-hmm. oh, gosh small world yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're all in the same department <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so how, how did like um you know your because like during your undergrad, you get some choices of some modules. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What kind of like made you choose like oh you know fluids is sort of my, my thing. Uh, my strategy when picking modules was I never knew what fluid dynamics was. I thought I'd find it interesting, so I picked it as an endpoint and then just picked modules. Which, if you ever go to university and do maths, a lot of time you have these big diagrams of to do this module you must do this module and that module. So essentially, my strategy for picking modules was fluid dynamics. What do I need? I need modeling, okay. second year modeling course, some calculus vector calculus modules. That was my strategy to mm-hmm. do that. And then mm-hmm. I essentially built off other modules which required, like, which, you know, I then access to. So the elastics module mm-hmm. had the same few exits as fluid. It was level okay. modules so I picked to do that. I did tip my dip my toes into the uh, algebra stuff. Oh, yeah. Was scared very badly by topology. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Bless. Yeah. yeah. I realised quite quickly after, like, a level 3 algebra module that algebra mm-hmm. definitely wasn't for me. Fair enough. But Fair that's enough. fine, because you yeah. found what is for you, yeah, 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 and yeah. you've got to well, try a little bit of everything. Personal to, taste. Yeah. yeah. We're allowed them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so how did you, like, why beeline for fluids? Was there anything, like, you know, before going in? Was it, you know what, I, I get a, a I, nice... I don't know why I've always found, like, I think it was just because of, like, I always thought it was difficult. And okay. I've always had a bit of a sort of... Like, oh, I want to do something that sounds difficult and hard. <laughs> so I picked that, and I've always liked mechanic-y stuff at A-level. The okay. bits of the maths mm-hmm. A-level, the maths A-level I enjoyed were mechanics stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I did, like, all the way up to, like, M5 or something. During, so I did, like, I, well, 
I managed to come to a deal with my teachers not to do <laughs> deal. Many, many stats modules if I just taught myself like M5 instead. Right, okay. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I didn't even know they went up to that many. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it goes up. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely remember, I think I only did like M2 and S2, but I remember there being like an M2. Yeah, I think there's an S6 this, or 7 as well. Yeah, so this is, yeah, Six. yeah, yeah. AQA, AQA goes all the way up to, oh God, anyone doing A levels now is going to ask me. It's probably changed, so it's fine. It probably we can, has, we can say yeah. anything. Uh, at least A level. WJEC has now gone to core and applied units, so the exams yes. yeah. and mechanics, it's gross. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was also when it was AS and A2, so mm-hmm. again, this makes a difference because of, um, you had to do a certain number anyway. Mm-hmm. But because of the modules were shared, you could do some mechanics and some stats modules in both A level maths and further maths. Okay. It meant there was just a massive amount in the AQA system. There was like your introductory, like just maths modules. Mm-hmm. Your pure maths modules, which you which aren't actually pure maths, you know, anything. you realise starting university that what they say is pure maths isn't actually. Yes, yeah. I um, remember thinking that. I literally, I remember I looked back at my personal statement not long ago yeah, that yeah. I wrote to go to uni, and I spoke about how much I love pure maths yeah. in my personal statement. Yeah. And I think at the time, and I still think pure maths is fascinating. Like I find I really enjoyed algebra at undergrad. But I realise like how different it is to your mm-hmm. perception of pure maths at A level. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. it suddenly kind of changed very quickly, and I found that actually applied maths was a little bit more. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah it goes up to like M five because I think there was like M five. It goes up to S five. There was two discrete modules, like yes. maybe three discrete modules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or was it like yeah decision? Yeah. The, oh decision. Yeah. 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 I knew yeah. it was D something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Decision maths. I did yeah. some of those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I quite yeah. liked them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, lots of algorithms. Yeah. And stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So what else? I suppose we looked at like what or spoke about what led you to fluids or what made you want to do that. Mm. But like going further back, what else did you do at A level, and why so, was it that you then chose maths out of all of those? I've always enjoyed maths. Mm. I don't know. I think. Mm. I think mean, back in like the wee times when you, you know, year one, two, and three. For whatever reason, I just really like doing Sudoku's. Oh, <laughs> nice. And because they had numbers in, I liked maths. I was also okay at maths. Um, and then, yeah, I did maths all the way up and I was, you know, enjoyed it. And then mm-hmm. when you're picking GCSEs and A-levels and stuff, I was like, maths, I can do that. Give me more. And yeah. then when picking universities and stuff, it was like, this was like, we think you're good at maths. We think you probably go to a top maths university. We don't mm-hmm. think you'll go to a top university. <laughs> Was, oh gosh! Which, well, I think I think I think uh, it was more a fact that mm. our uni- our school was quite competitive, wanting to get as many people into top universities as okay. possible for the way for their, their advertisement right, of themselves. Okay. Um, so I think because I was good, it was like you're doing maths because you're good, and we think we can get you into a top university, so then we can brag about it. So as much as I wanted to do maths, it was also the school heavily encouraged me to also do maths. Mm. It does so happen that I enjoyed it, but I enjoy it. That's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, or I'm just institutionalised I'm not sure uh, <laughs> we're going to cut that yeah. out <laughs> no no I, I joke <laughs> um, no uh, but I enjoy, I've always enjoyed maths so I do maths yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, Elijah's just filled us in yes. on how Lots of details. Edexcel works so pure stats and mechanics 25, 25 and 50 uh, further maths is core Pure one and two, which is fifty total, and then two of stats one, stats two, mech one, mech two, pure one, pure two, decision one, and decision oh. two. Oh. See, so. I yeah, I did Edexcel maths, and it was sort of similar to that, but I had we had to do like all of the cu- pure mo- the core modules rather, yeah. and then all of the like further pure it was called. Yeah, um, and then I did some stats and mechanics and stuff, but. Yeah, they've obviously changed it a little bit. Yeah, we're not that old that it's no, no. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't O levels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just intrigued now because I've just realised that like you three all overlap in some sense. So you guys both did your undergrad at Bath. Okay. Yeah. But then, so if if Henry did his master's project with Paul, yeah, that would have only been. Last, Last year. year. Mm. So did you guys never meet? Even I, th- I no. think there was once when you were in Paul's office and I had a meeting with him. You came into my office. I think probably once, but I think there was also a time when you were talk. I know there was a female voice in the office <laughs> talking with Paul, 
I'm clearly a student, mm -hmm. and I was meant to have a meeting. I like knocked on the door, but there was nobody. He didn't answer, so I waited for like ten minutes, and then I'll just come back in half an hour. That could have been me. Paul does mm -hmm. have, uh, I think, three of us currently. He has another student in engineering. He has like a proper, okay, really? yeah, yeah, a proper. He has meetings with them really regularly, and I've never met them before. When we were in mm -hmm. Santiago. He had a meet call with someone. He got off the phone, and I was like, "Oh, who is that?" And he was like, "Oh, I just had a supervisor meeting with my other student." And I was like, "What? <laughs> Excuse yeah. me." My like, yeah. world is shattered. <laughs> but I, I remember one of his master students coming in when I had a meeting because he's notoriously delayed. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think I ever like. I don't think it, it might have not been. Was it last year? I don't know how long I've been here. <laughs> okay, I remember. I remember. Okay, this is a, this I might have been blonde. <laughs> I don't know. I you were on secondment a little bit last year yeah. as well. So, you, so I do remember though. This is now a different a tangent. It's fine. But we like tangents. About how busy Paul is primarily was like we're talking about master's projects. Like, oh, I found an old master's thesis by somebody and didn't even have a person's name. Just couldn't remember who did his master's project with. <laughs> it was only like two or three years ago. Oh, <laughs> oh. bless. Yeah. I want to make sure he remembers me. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think anybody in the master department will forget you. <laughs> I don't know. Is that is that a fair enough to say or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can find something better though. Mm. We, yeah. Mm. Sure it exists. Yeah. <laughs> what year were you born in? You ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we don't even have that. I'm no. Because <laughs> <laughs> even I, I hate this. I don't like being the youngest, even though I shouldn't be the youngest. You're not the youngest in Santa. No, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. But I'm not far off. What date's your birthday? Actually, Henry. Have you had, like, no, no, have you had your birthday this year? Henry. Henry. Yeah. We're live on the internet. Okay, yeah. No asking that question. Okay, sure. I mean, unless people want to send me presents. Yeah. It was, no, it was more no, it's fine. No. no. I like to. No, it was just kind of Because you might be younger than everybody else in our cohort then. I'm not. Okay. Oh, wait. No, I, I am. Is everybody, yeah. I am, yeah. Do you want to show your mother's movie? <laughs> Do you want to show your Like, stop it. Um. So, why did you choose <laughs> Bath Uni, you know, of all the unis in the world? Yes, thank you, sir. <laughs> um, was this like to do so the school again, sort of? No, well, or? I've always liked Bath City. My godmother lives in Bath. Oh, okay. As a child, we always came up to Bath for stuff. It just so then also happened that Bath is a good university. Mm. Um, so, I applied for Oxford, mm -hmm. Imperial, never mm -hmm. got an offer back. Bath gave me an offer. So, I was like, yes, send <laughs> yes. me here. So mm -hmm. I did that, and then you know the entrance paper and stuff. Oh, so did you have to do? Oh yeah, I did. You not have to do an entrance paper, but because well, you had no. two, I had two offers. I had A star, was it A star A B? If I did, then was it a step? Not a step. Not Wait, not there's like there's another, there's a third. So it's three main university entrance papers. This when I did it. There's Matt for Oxford That's and Imperial. I did, yeah. Step, and then there's another one. Which Bath used, I don't know if it Bath, Warwick, and Durham use. TMUA, I, Elijah's saying. Okay, yeah, I did that one. Mm -hmm. I actually. never heard of this. No, I haven't. Yeah, so that. it's only, you only need it, so Bath use it, well, as part of their offer was that, or A star A, and I did that with. Um, mm. I actually have set all the entrance papers because our school made us all do step one for you doing mm. further maps just in case you got a good score to put it on applications and mm. stuff. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, because genuinely, like I say, I knew there was an Oxford and a Cambridge yeah. entrance one, um, and that other universities use them, but I didn't. Yeah. Mm. So was it just a case of you'll we'll give you like a lower? It was. It was a lower entry. offer. Yeah. So I had two offers. Yeah. I had A star AA or A star AB with a pass in the other entrance paper. Right. I think they would have also taken mm -hmm. step two as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But step two was really difficult. The other was easier. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I did one of the step papers mainly for like for Cambridge but like I did Bath as well and they did that whole like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you do okay in it let yeah. me lower your grade but I, I, I failed so I oh. didn't get <laughs> to be fair, I didn't I get a lower grade entry I know I because I sat the maths and I they do that earlier though so you mm. sit the maths in like October November time yeah so that you've got the score before you get offers and I failed that yeah so <laughs> 
it's getting, from my recollection of conversations, I'm sure people are in the process or have been through Facebook's which applications, it's easier to get in, the interviews at Cambridge are harder, but it's easier to get an interview because you don't do a paper first. Mm. But it's hard to get an interview, the Oxford interviews are easier, but it's harder to get one because you have to do an entrance yes. paper before yeah. you do one. Mm. It's like they already filter out some of the candidates yeah. Yeah. saying if you fail the entrance exam, you don't get a interview. As yeah. someone that cried in their Oxford interview, I want it known that it's still quite hard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not taking away from um, our entries and stuff, but yeah, like I think it's the general rule of thumb is depending on what point of process you want to be rejected, <laughs> you pick one or the other. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to apply for Cambridge and get rejected in the summer, you do step stuff or if you want to get rejected in the autumn and move on you do Oxford nice. Oxford. or we go for like let's not get rejected let's be optimistic and true <laughs> yeah. oh, okay mm. so what after you'd obviously you obviously liked it at Bath yeah because you're still here yeah um, with a lot of other people actually like a lot of people mm-hmm. do seem to stay here after yeah. I feel Bath. like in most cohorts of like the Samba CMT yeah. there's always like at least one person. yeah definitely my for like samba stuff was I wanted to do I was uh, this came from Paul because um, I was talking to him he was like How, do you want to do it I was really considering doing a PhD I never sort of did, thought I was good enough but he was like mm-hmm. I think you would make a good PhD student do you want to do a PhD oh, okay. I was like okay yeah sure where do you think I should apply and <laughs> obviously right. Paul being a member of the samba exec team and being part of a master so have you heard of samba <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I was like, oh no, and it's like, oh yeah, it's CDT. And in general, hearing about, um, so CDT, Centre Doctoral Training, programmes are, you do four years instead of a traditional three, but the first year is a taught year, so you get taught modules, and additionally you get an additional master's out of it, but it's training, you get some slight more flexibility in how, you get some more choice in what your actual project's mm-hmm. going to be. Not always the case, but like, at least yeah. you get to have a conversation you can actually learn about the supervisor properly before picking instead of finding phd.com and maybe having a couple of interviews mm. with the supervisor first. And for applied maths, when I was looking, sort of, there was only a handful of CDT programmes in the UK, which were like interesting. There was one up in Edinburgh I applied for. Mm-hmm. There's one here. I applied for and I applied for a for lot of like PhD stuff. And it just so happened that I got an offer from Bath that first. Means. So I was like, <laughs> yes. Sign me up. Yeah. It was sort of probably always my top choice, but there is some discussion about is it actually good to do a PhD at the same university you did your, mm. and is a question which needs to be asked. Um, but for me, the pros of being a, I'm keen to do industrial stuff, which is what Samba does. Mm. It's also like I liked the department, and that sort of felt more important necessarily than going to a department you didn't know. And actually, not liking it. Yeah, definitely. Um, it felt like a safe bet. It's a mm. city I like. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, true. and I think it. I think there is definitely, like you say, a good point about if you want to stay in academia, you po- probably should get to a point in your career where you think about moving around. Yeah. But if it's a, it's a wise choice for you to sort of, I suppose, tap into the industry contacts here. Then I don't think there's any harm in staying in the same yeah. place to do your PhD. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there is anyway. Like in theory, if you want to mm-hmm. stay at the same place for your whole academic career, if there's a job there, yeah. there's nothing stopping you. Oh no, right? I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I think it's probably more of. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's one of those things where it's some. Um, I think it's slightly more ancient advice that people are told to do. I think it's just one of those sort of statements yeah, yeah. which gets tossed about when like talking. And I don't know if there's any actually evidence yeah. to suggest yeah. that. Academics who did their like masters and then PhDs mm. at the same institution have less success afterwards. Mm. I don't. I don't think there's any. I don't think it is the case. No. It's more prevalent at postdoc level. It's mostly there just because the network that you get is then bigger. Yes. Yeah. That's the only yeah. reason. If you do conferences and you have good collaborators, mm. in theory, it shouldn't make that much yeah. difference. Yeah, and that's what I think. I had a conversation mm. about. It's like at undergrad though. I didn't really know any of the lecturers in the yeah. same sense that. As soon as you sort of become a PhD student, you're part of a mechanism of a department. You're, you're sort of helping the department work mm. to, even though mm. you're a little bit of it, but you're still doing tutoring, you're still getting involved. You have regular meetings with supervisors for a whole bunch of different things. Mm. You're part, a bit more part of a machine than as an undergrad, where you're just sort of, maths is being, de- being done to you, you are not doing maths. Mm. Whereas as a PhD student, you are sort of doing active maths. Sorry, just the phrase maths is being done to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
all I know is that I moved between undergrad and postgrad, so I feel justified to stay yeah. here to do a postdoc <laughs> yeah, 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 if yeah. the position became nice. available. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I also did my, my undergrad here, um, and similar to you, you know, like, it was, Bath was, like, the first place to give me an offer for like, yeah. a PhD, and I was like, yes, go on then. Um, how did I find out about Samba, though? I'm not so sure. I think my elasticity lecturer mentioned it on, on the okay. one hand. But I, don't know, I think I actually found the Edinburgh CDG thing first. And I was like, ooh, CDG sound good. Where are they? And I was like, oh, right here. Yeah. It's like, nice. <laughs> Let's go. I also well, didn't find out, but when I was doing PhD, looking for PhD, I went to uh, London's M- London Map Society, the LMS. Mm-hmm. They do, mm-hmm. in the autumn, they they did like an online lecture where mm. things are and it's like if you're interested in analysis these universities do it if you're interested okay. in fluid or dynamics like all the stuff I was interested in mm. they're like institutions which do it Bath yeah. for lots and lots and lots of them was like Bath do fluids Bath do dynamical system stuff Bath do quite a lot of numerical stuff so it's like if you're interested all these places Bath was sort of the intersection of all my interests mm. Mm. yeah I only realised recently that I think I actually came to a Samba information event about like applying for PhDs what? before I even realised what Samba was and thought about applying for it. So I've got, <laughs> this is like, I'm so sorry, Susie, I was listening to what you were saying, <laughs> but I've got a video on my phone of like, because I was at home, it was over the summer before I started my master's year, and I've got a video on my phone of my dog like mm. shaking because he's seen like a squirrel in the garden or something, and you can just hear Susie talking about PhD <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I was paying attention, but like, <laughs> squirrel. Um, yeah, and I just, I don't know why, like at the time it kind of didn't register yeah. that this was run by a CDT, and I just ended up coming back full circle That's and eventually crazy. applying. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty cute. Um, fun, yeah. fun, 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 fun. <laughs> I think they still do. I know they did it last year. Bath did like in Bath. There was a Bath PhD Open Day thing, like a Bath mm. information in the autumn. Because mm. I went to it, and it, I think it is you can attend it. It's like doing a PhD at Bath. Um, okay. The audience was like students at Bath considering a PhD. And there was like more mm. general PhD information, and there was like, and then also you had people external coming to it, and it was like doing a PhD at bar mm. so those events still exist presumably I <laughs> presumably um, well at least they did last year so I suspect it's something the department will continue mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah keep an eye out for that if you're considering doing a PhD at bar or at all <laughs> <laughs> can we clip that and put it <laughs> yeah um, so is there is there anything that while thinking about doing a PhD, um, you sort of thought might have held you back? So yeah, so I have dyslexia. I am a dyslexic, um, which I think, I mean, probably first thing to do is explain what is dyslexia, because it's Mm. sort of commonly misrepresented. Dyslexia as like a learning difficulty is not about being bad at reading and writing, which is the outcome. It's about information processing primarily. Mm. Okay. So the outcome is it's harder to read them up, but it's actually more about the way dyslexic people process information. Additionally, dyslexic is being dyslexic. There's a lot, lot of different outcomes and stuff. So people with dyslexia have difficulties with different things. Okay. So the best way mm. I've had my dyslexia described to me, mm. so this is going to be about computer jargon, so please... <laughs> Um, is if my brain was considered a computer, you have your CPU mm-hmm. which does all the calculations, you have like the hard drive which is your memory, and then you have a RAM which is your working memory, so a short term thing. So okay. if you're thinking about doing mental maths, that mental maths mm-hmm. is being held in your short term memory. So I've been described it like I have not a lot of RAM. So okay. um, so when like I'm terrible at mental arithmetic, I'm terrible at massive like, so like doing a big calculation by hand, I'm really really bad, and I'll, I'll make loads of mistakes. Um, and there's like lots of like weird things I always like muck up. Mm. So a big thing is like if I'm doing if I'm messaging someone, I will be at this location at something like at six o'clock in twenty four hour time. Mm. Um, I will a lot of time do sixteen instead of eighteen because I'm like it's okay. six o'clock. I need yeah. to convert it, yeah. so like, and then like I need yeah. to like add two, but then I always get it wrong. So then I think I mean, I'll do sixteen, and then like I see. Like, I was, you said to meet us at the train station. You're already on the train now. It's, it's gone past six. 
Oh yeah, I know, I know that. Um, I also misspeak quite a lot. Mm. So lots of times I do weird things like if I'm like, oh yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, but it's actually on Monday. So let's say we were doing something on Friday. Mm-hmm. I'd already be thinking about, like when are we doing that thing? You say, oh yeah, we're doing it. Are we doing that thing tomorrow? And you say, no, we're doing it on Friday. Mm. And I'd be like, we're doing it on Friday, so that's not tomorrow. But I'd say, oh yeah, I'll see you tomorrow then. So I like I already like to sort of skip a day to Friday in my head. I like to sort of go a step right. ahead and then say that. Mm. Another example I do all the time is when differentiating sine and cos. Mm. Sine goes to cos and you get cos goes to minus sine. But I always will do it and think I always must remember to go down a level. So then I'll do it twice by accident. Oh. So when like if I'm so that's it. Okay. Uh, there's also plus and minus stuff. But yeah, so that's something. Mm. But like some more general stuff. I'm terrible at copying notes from whiteboards. So copying stuff I'm bad at, mm. again, which doesn't help when doing complicated calculations on paper because I'll make copy errors between lines all the time. Mm. Um, uh, there's a big sort of, this is a slightly more massy thing, so there's mm. a big stereotype of dyslexic being bad with D and B, so misspelling mm. um, seeing all the time. That's not necessarily an issue with maths, but in maths, especially in fluid dynamics and a lot of things, U and B. I am oh. terrible with U and B. Yeah. Yeah. It is a nightmare, especially on exam papers. I've lost, I think, half of like half a question because I got U and B mixed, mu- oh, gosh. M- uh, mis- like mistake, like mucked yeah. up in it. I've even actually said to some lecturers, "Can you please write the paper to be like more friendly yeah. and not use U and B?" Mm. Um, and then they didn't mm. because it's like, like, "Oh yeah, it's tradition notation." It's like it's actually not friendly notation. Yeah. 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 Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Then? When you do fluids, typically you put velocity as U and yeah. W. What do you use? Um, it's only really an issue if I'm doing something like if I'm doing it in my office, I can be careful with it mm-hmm. because I will check it and check it again. It's when I'm in an exam and you uh, only have okay. time to do it once, it needs to be correct the first time. Mm-hmm. So my I can maybe check it again quickly by the end, but if I've got, not got a lot of time. I'm not going to check it, so it's got to be friendly for the first time. Yeah, got you. Okay. Um, a lot of time, I may use X, like U and B as my own notation, or like, mm-hmm. or actually, what I do tend to do is I would tend to like do like U and then like some sort of like hat, like the indice X or something. Mm. So that's velocity is always U in the X direction. Yeah. Or okay. maybe a tilde or a bar or something above it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I really like that that um, uh, computer yeah. analogy. I hadn't heard of that before. But yeah. mm. I feel like I was well. I just don't really know much about dyslexia. No. Yeah, it's it's, and it's again it's something that's like really there's a lot of stereotypes about. Yeah. So again, I'm stereotypically bad at writing reports. I always need to give myself more time. So if I'm writing a report, I'm never. I will be in trouble if I'm in a position where I need to write a report and hand it in the next day, because of. Um, I don't know about people who are non-dyslexic, mm. but you can probably write something comprehensible the first time and not mm. necessarily need to proofread it. Obviously, you want to and stuff, but like if I was to hand in work like that, it would make no sense. It would be an absolute mess. Okay. So you need to be when well, I need to be very careful about how much time I allow myself to proofread, mm. mm-hmm. and I need to actually be able to write something, give it two or three days before I next look at it, so I can actually then catch stuff. Because otherwise I will read it and like, oh yeah, that's exactly how it sounds in my head. And I'm like mm-hmm. forgetting all the grammatical things that make sense in a sentence. Like all the connecting yeah, words and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. mm. I think it's definitely interesting that you say like it's not just like one thing. It is much more yeah. of a spectrum of symptoms yeah, so and signs. Because and, like you said, the common misconception is that it's just you're not very good at reading yeah. and writing. Mm. But... I suppose I hadn't necessarily appreciated how that crosses over into Yeah, maths. I mean, there's a lot more information on the British Dyslexic Association website okay. about like the dis like the definition yeah. of dyslexia, mm-hmm. and it's actually far more like nuanced than I've said. Um, there's like a whole like sort of paragraph. They've got a re- relatively good YouTube video sort of explaining it, um, and it's interesting because again, it's something in, like pop culture that you know you have. Mm like dyslexia is one thing because I don't have any issues with reading necessarily like a book I can mm, read a book okay. or something fine mm-hmm. um, I've never struggled I've always enjoyed reading I've always been an avid like mm. reading in my own time and stuff but stereotypically dyslexic is a bad at reading mm. which isn't necessarily the case for me 
which is interesting. Like, yeah, it's, it's an entire spectrum and people have it a lot worse than others. Mm-hmm. When did you find out? So, I was always, so like, when you were a child learning to spell with like phonics and yeah. stuff, I was terrible. Um, and so like, my school was like, we think he has dyslexia. Okay. My parents said, okay, can you get him tested for it? So then I was tested I um, for it at an, like, quite an early age. So I've known I've had dyslexic, been dyslexic since you feel year four. So again, that's actually for dyslexia quite an early time. Lots of people are undiagnosed mm-hmm. with being dyslexic. And there is, as a slight tangent, a massive issue with naughty children in schools are actually dyslexic. But nobody ever diagnoses yeah. them, so they're not learning or can read it or can understand yeah. it or can yeah. process it, so then they misbehave. There's a similar study actually with naughty children in school actually need glasses. Oh, really? Because they mm-hmm. like will sit in the back of the class because that's where everybody sits and they can't then leave the board, so they then don't engage with the lesson. Mm-hmm. So they muck around and get further behind than you have. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what sort of like support were you given like throughout school? So through school was um, questionable. School mm. schools in the UK aren't brilliant at dealing with it. You could get lucky. Some schools are really really good, but all mm-hmm. the schools I had with learning support was just like, oh, you can't spell. Here is some like year one phonics, uh, which isn't necessarily helpful mm. and incredibly pandering. Yeah. Um, and as much as I enjoy school, mm. there's lots of things like. At our school at GCSE, you weren't allowed to do ling- English Lit if you didn't do, if you were dyslexic or bad at English. Really? So I only have, I don't, and you like really limited mm. the number of A-levels you can take. So I don't know how many A-levels people have taken in this room, but I have only eight, eight uh, not A-levels, GCSE. I was going to say, have A-levels. This is like a sort of, I will put that down to again a dyslexic, that's sort of what I mean by a dyslexic. I will always make those mistakes. That is like my, I'm thinking about it and like, so yeah. GCSEs, okay. um, I only have eight GCSEs, mm-hmm. which I think is quite uncommon for people, mm-hmm. since I know people like commonly have like 10 or 11. So Yeah, I think standards, you have to have five, I think, yeah. yes, to graduate, and then it's most people will do around the 10 mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I was around there. Yeah. yeah, so I like have, so I have like, I think you like the sort of minimum, which is mm. for most like sort of universities don't have necessarily things on GCSEs mm-hmm. but they like to have triple mm-hmm. science or double science mm-hmm. English in English language maths and a foreign language yeah. which I have mm-hmm. uh, or, or and then history or geography I think mm. that's like, like the English baccalaureate yeah. isn't it yeah. yeah so they like to have that which I have plus design technology <laughs> but yeah so our school's like really restricted if you had a like any sort of like learning disability you're sort of put in the and like it was actually a massive issue, particularly my parents pushed up to me to be in a top math set. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, oh, you're not good at English, therefore you're not good at maths. Really? Yeah, yeah. so my parents had a fight for me to do for, like proper like higher yeah, level yeah, yeah. maths and stuff. Because our school was like, you're not good at English, therefore you can't do maths. And like my parents, were, my parents were like, yes, you can. Yeah. Here is the evidence. And the school's like, this is unusual. Yeah. <laughs> it seems almost counterintuitive that they would go that way because I I get that you need basic English skills to a certain extent to do any subject, but usually I I want to say again potentially generalising that the correlation between how good you are at English and maths is probably more on the negative side. I think it came down a lot more to do like discrimination style stuff of yeah. you're not good at English therefore you're not very bright. As opposed to, yeah. so if you're not very bright, you can't do maths, mm. which is actually complete garbage. Mm. Um, and there's like, additionally, evidence suggests that people with dyslexia are better at processing different kinds of information, particularly with regards to pattern recognition. Okay. So, um, again, again, in the department of maths, people mm. do maths and you sort of, as maths mm. is the science of pattern recognition mm. to an extent, I'm good at pattern recognition. Mm. I'm just, everybody else this one is probably also good at pattern recognition because that is yeah. how mm. math that is what maths is but yeah so I'm that's probably why I like to do things and therefore chose maths mm. interesting um, yeah. Yeah. and then university is a lot better for dyslexia stuff mm. um, A because universities get support funding for disability access stuff mm. so I'm not sure the details, but I'm fairly confident the university for each student with a learning disability gets some additional funding from the government into the school of learning. So I know that you can claim 
So quite commonly, and there's a bit of sort of a joke in the people with dyslexia, is your university will give you a laptop. So okay. if you have dyslexia, a lot of people with dyslexia can also claim to have a laptop. You can also claim to have additional funding for certain stuff. Um, so you can get, I know people who have got access to certain e-reading software, um, text-to-speech software mm -hmm. through universities. So universities are in general a lot better mm. um, at dealing with people with dyslexia and Again, Bar okay. Bath has been. I know other universities have been good. Sure, yeah. So I've only been through the Bath University system, but they have been good with learning dif difficulty stuff. Okay. Okay. So like math is like quite like a, an exam heavy sort of. Yeah. Thing. So also like support. So I get twenty five percent extra time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I kind of think the way that my struggles with dyslexia, I think, as much as you need to have some way to make the exams equatable, it doesn't necessarily feel like twenty five percent of it seems like, I don't know, just a bad way of doing it. Yeah. Because of, a lot of time with my, like, processing of, like, doing stuff quickly, I still struggle with time. I've still, like, a massive time pressure. I don't know if there's a fair way of doing it. I don't know if you could, there's a better way of doing it. Like, to some extent, I would have liked to, like, be able to write the paper. And obviously, you can never do this in, like, normal time. And then the next day, have 25% time to look at your answers mm -hmm. and check them. But obviously, you can never do that because of yeah. cheating and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it feels like, it does feel like the sort of default 25% time if you're dyslexic and maybe 50% if you have, just doesn't necessarily feel like a way to make it equitable, but I don't know if there's a better way. Mm. There is like some issues with regards to, this is only a university thing since going to online exams last year. We're now back in person, but exams are, because they're open book, they got rid of a lot of like university exams. You had about 40% of marks, which was textbook definition stuff. 40% which were problem sheet questions, and then like 20% which were, these are an unseen problem, these are your first class material. And what you seem to have with like, because of COVID and the open books, mm. was they got rid of the first 40% and made it actually some sort of calculation. The middle, like problem sheet questions was a problem sheet question, but much, much harder mm. in terms of the maths. <laughs> like the techniques weren't any different. It was do this technique, but actually it's a really nasty differential equation mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. And the 20% of stuff was still just harder, unseen stuff. And for someone who struggles with doing complicated calculations, mm -hmm. it like I like know the material, I know how to do this problem, but now wrapping this problem in this mess of a differential yeah. equation where I'm going to make a calculation yeah. mistake, it's going to take me long because so I'm never going to have enough time to check it, is kind of hard and sort of disheartening to an extent. Mm. Yeah, like I so said, it's, it's kind of nice that there is they're trying to put that extra support in place yeah mm. but it's just a shame that it is it's not like one size fits all yeah and it's, it, what that might work it might help some people but like you say for you it doesn't necessarily yeah work. It just do you have any idea of like what you think in an exam situation like you say having the 25 percent extra the next day would help yeah them. but you can never do that no. i mean i don't know it would be nice to have because yeah, my issues with dyslexia in a maths exam is primarily in terms of doing a complicated calculation mm. quickly in my head. Mm. So the, the exam material is not on can you find, yeah. can you differentiate this nasty, nasty function? That's not the question. The question is what is the Fish information matrix, which is a matrix made up of the second order differential equations mm. from this nasty thing? So how am I, how, like, can you give me software? And does that doesn't really, if you give me access yeah. to Wolfram Alpha, that doesn't necessarily yeah, yeah. then everybody needs access to Wolfram Alpha. Yeah. Which I think it's you can do as best you can and then sort of I don't, I don't know just grin and bear it and just come up with strategies for exams which you can mm. do stuff through um, talk to talk to your person who sets for the exam and explain potential issues you may have with the exam and see if they will accommodate mm. those. Yeah. I've not ever had any success with that but you might get lucky. Yeah. I think, again, it's difficult. You, like, I think from a lecturer who doesn't necessarily understand dyslexia and what it's like, I think either they will write a paper to be in a dyslexic-friendly way because they either have dyslexia or know someone with dyslexic, dyslexia or know the challenges you yeah. may have. So that's not going to be an issue regardless. Or they're not going to understand and just think you just are trying to make the nice and easy exam paper. Yeah, that's mm. fair. Yeah, yeah. We have some people in the chat also like you know agree with that you know for their like exams they've just made open book and it's way harder yeah i feel like you know like rather than testing like you know, previously they try and test like you know that your general kind of understanding of the topic 
but I guess for for this it's just like you know make it open bit kind of just like artificially harder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of screwed screwed you in particular. Yeah. So it is what it is. But I'm here on a PhD program, mm. so yeah, it's it like it's, it's it's hard to complain a lot because I'm here <laughs> and did well. But it also feels mm. like I'm justified because it is true. And mm. if if I was in a situation where I needed, I wasn't actually. I was in a position where as long as I didn't fail in my final years, yeah. I was going to be fine. Mm. Mm. But if you're in a position where you actually need 80% in an exam mm. and you can't then get it. So if you look at my exam transcript, my particular exams I can point out and they did an unpleasant thing in the exam, those exams across the board are 10% lower than everything else. Mm. So um, one of my exams over COVID, um, com- computation, uh, scientific computing was ex- coursework only. And because you have, obviously it's much time inside of a two-week period to do the coursework, that exam is significantly higher than all the other exams that year which weren't open book. Mm. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Which I think, again, it's like you're, like you say, you're, you're still here, you've managed yeah. to Yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's, it's affected you, it's put you at a little bit of a disadvantage, but not so much so that it stopped you from getting to yeah. where you are. But somebody else could be in a position where it does actually disadvantage yeah, them and so much. Um, it's. I mean, I think you can explain. So I at my university applications mm-hmm. and stuff like definitely made sure to tell them like explain why these marks were lower here, mm-hmm. and then you can only hope that the people assessing you or asking are going to be compassionate about that and understand. Which again, I think, I think there needs to be better education about dyslexia yeah, in general, definitely. and it does, you know, seem to be somewhat of a, it's somewhat of a cultural punching bag in an extent there's mm. some sort of cultural bias with learning difficulties in general mm. Mm. yeah um so it's 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 a difficult one and yeah um it's hard yeah, yeah. there's another comment in the chat just now about um how it's like it's frustrating that there's always some questions or some parts of an exam where it's like you're just not expected to be able to do it anyway mm. And it's like, well, how is that giving even people without learning difficulties yeah. a chance when then you've got sort of people who do struggle because they have an extra element of True. like difficulty? Yeah. And it, like you say, yeah, it's just how is then that fair on other people? And yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the question is, what are you writing the exam to do? If you're writing the exam to be able to calculate something very, very difficult, then mm. fine, I've struggled and can't do that. Congratulations, you've... Mm found a yeah. test I cannot pass. Um, you if, made yourself feel good, but nobody yeah. else. <laughs> if the point of the exam is to be able to apply these methods to a problem, then what's the point of making it really, really difficult from where people aren't failing because they don't know the like, lecture material, they're mm. failing because they yeah. can't no. actually answer the question. Completely valid point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if you, if you could speak to all those examiners over the years that have told you, like, or that have like done a difficult exam paper, like, what would your advice be? For them, as like I, I just thinking, like you say, they they don't always appreciate the struggles. Yeah, of I mean, I think there's definitely questions about sympathetically, like using characters and stuff, which offend me. As I said, you and these have been an issue in the past. Mm. Set notation, which is friendly. If you want to make a question hard, make it conceptually hard because it's a difficult part of an exam, mm. or you have to apply a certain trick in a way. Don't make it hard by wrapping it up in an enigma, wrapped up in a puzzle. Yeah. What if it was in a Sudoku? Yeah, in a <laughs> Sudoku. Like yeah, it, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but make it hard in ways which isn't just add a load of uh, trigonom- tr- trigonometric functions mm. to it. Oh, well, thank you. Or <laughs> just like, it's hard because there's five different terms you need to differentiate, and some of them will cancel at some point. Hope you haven't made a mistake and can spot that, because otherwise, then you have to spend another. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a difficult one because. Mm the way university exams are written are mm-hmm. to be a bit like that so guessing an entire generation of ex- lecturers who sat exams were like that to do something then different than themselves when set yeah, an exam yeah. everybody has been sat in exams where the questions have been impossible so they made themselves set questions which are impossible mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm not quite sure what, how you're meant to do that yeah no yeah oh Cat does maths. I wonder who that is. <laughs> has um, commented about our thoughts on the open dyslexic font. So my, there's a lot of, uh, again, the British. Anybody who wants to write maths, write anything in general to be dyslexic friendly. Mm. The British Dyslexic Association has a dyslexic style guide, okay. um, mm. which has a lot of advice about 
actually language to use with small dyslexic friendly, like dyslexic font line spacing and stuff, and how to make text you produce dyslexic friendly. Mm. Again, because the way dyslexic is different for different people, I've never found dyslexic fonts particularly useful. Okay. Mm. I have a like a mitigating so I have an eye condition which makes reading at distance harder for me in general. So a lot of the um so I've got an eye condition which means my eyes move from side to side which means letters sort of blur vertical and a lot of dyslexic fonts okay. are vertical based so Arial oh. is the standard one and I find it harder to read Arial so that's maybe because of my eye condition mm. if I did have that then maybe dyslexia would be easier like be easier to read that with being dyslexic but for me I've never found fonts difficult the best what I do like to do and what I would encourage anybody doing anything is never have text on a white background mm. pastel okay. colours you always want to write things on pastel colours. So, like, slightly off-white creams. Okay. Um, it is easier to read for everyone, mm. and particularly for dyslexics, contrasting colours between white and black is really, really hard to do. Mm. Okay. That, that is something I've heard, actually, about yeah. like black and white is the worst possible oh, thing I've you could do. I mean, yeah. I, I think, like, yellow, like, for the rest of, like, yellow. There's a very worse colour okay. combination. <laughs> but, 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 white, but white and black is bad. Yeah. I went to primary school with a girl that basically had, like, a sort of like a quality street kind of yellow, like a transparent like piece okay. of plastic, yeah, yeah. but like like, but like a quality street yeah, rapper like sure. vibe. And she used to put that over all yeah, of that, that, that and all that work. Oh, one sec. Camera's oh, the light's gone off. Yeah, oh, it's, it's okay. gone now. All the, the oh. things up. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Okay. 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 You maybe want to fucking work. Yeah. The void. yeah, you know when we had that conversation with Henry about don't swear? <laughs> <laughs> I said you shouldn't swear. Oh, gosh. I never said nothing about me. Um, it's it's not even registered as a camera. It's now a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's fine. a radio show. I can bring the. Um, Oh, I'm next to Queen of Don't Stop Me Now. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. Oh, no, we're not. We're oh, there we are. Hey. hey. Thank you, chat. Hey. Did well, we... I fixed it. But would you have known that it was broken? I have noticed eventually. <laughs> Did they have a, like, before audio from what we were talking about? Or was it just the camera which died? The camera died. They were okay. able to hear you until I started pressing buttons. Cool. And then I broke Perfect. it. Perfect. <laughs> like, as well. So yeah, so there has been a thing in what ages that people have had like transparent films to put over stuff to read. Mm. But um, I know there's been advice to primary school teachers to make their classrooms dyslexic friendly. So like, mm. any poster boards and stuff, never to put a poster board on a white background. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I think for young children, yeah, so, something as simple as like colours, yeah, could literally go so like could go a long way, couldn't it? Yeah. I mean, in general advice, mm. I would say is if you're ever mm. producing mass content mm. online, like you're, so you're hosting notes on a website or something. Have a link to a PDF download so that somebody wants to change a font for any reason or a background can just download it and then change it themselves for mm -hmm. their own. I love that. Um, like, you can have your notes displayed in whatever fancy way you like on your website. So just have a link somewhere to like a PDF. Just so that yeah, people then yeah. can just update it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, again, in a similar vein, if you're ever doing a presentation, have, if you can, give access to a presentation sometime before it starts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've... Uh, when I'm doing presentations, they have a QR code to scan, so then people can open up just the link which has a slides for their own computer and stuff, Ooh. or their phone. Again, someone who is hard at seeing reading at distance, mm. being able to then follow along with stuff yeah, on a phone yeah. is really, really useful. Um, even better if you can send it before, because I quite like to read the slides beforehand, so I can go into a talk yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. oh, there's a term oh, I don't know, I can actually look up, and mm. so it's easier to be engaged with a talk. Oh. But yeah, having given just in general for yeah. like just access of stuff it's just a lot nicer for someone who's hard at seeing at distance mm -hmm. just have access to stuff mm -hmm. on my phone mm -hmm. well, I think I'll start doing that you know yeah, I think it's something so simple as well. Like yeah. literally, if you do in a presentation, it's like instead of having a white background, it's it's nothing to just yeah. do a pastel mm -hmm. background, is it? No, yeah. it's not. And I can see reasons why you wouldn't want to give out slides beforehand for like confidentiality reasons or like this is like something you don't want somebody copying. Um, mm. But I think for most cases you could give slides out. I don't think. Even if it's like this slide was different because I changed it this morning. Mm. But in that case, then just have like a QR code to a live Dropbox of where yeah, exactly. the last slide mm. thing was. Everybody's 
everybody's likely to have a phone on them, then you just have it open your phone. Mm. Long comment in chat. Um, so yeah, about the open dyslex dyslexic font making the process of producing documents more irritating, um, and something about um, staff to using. I don't know how you're going to pronounce that. So Tiosias. Tiosias. Info font. Info font, which has been developed with the Royal National Institute of Blind People. Mm. Mm. Okay. So have you seen Open Dyslexic before? No. Mm. So it's the font that. So Kindle have started doing it, which is why I asked about it because yeah. I saw that it was an option on the Kindle. It's as you said, it's a vertical one, but it's heavily weighted on the left hand side of each letter. Okay. So okay. if you look at it, mm. each individual character is like mm. heavily weighted on one side okay. um, but as Thomas is saying it's like that's why it kind of is very different from right, okay. standard yeah. fonts rather than stuff like serif versus sans serif yes, which is just yeah. like mm. making uh, mm -hmm. letters a bit more well rounded and mm -hmm. I think yeah there's, there's some difficulty with especially from an academic point of view everything is written with certain style guides for papers mm. LaTeX which is the main maths processing language everything is in uh, what's it called computer modern i think is the standard mm. standard i think it's computer modern or might be modern computer it's something it's something that's like a standard um font i think because i looked it up yesterday in preparation mm. for this interview <laughs> it, from the website i said is, is computer modern someone who knows more about fonts might correct me but that's not a latex standard but i think it is okay um so that is basically what anything yeah maths, is that is all of like any maths you written will have been that so i'm now just used to reading stuff mm. in computer mm. modern okay. mm. so again you can get some pdf editors to do it and all the notation stuff is in the computer modern version of that like greek letters so mm. it's a difficult one mm. but i think i think the best thing is just make notes accessible to people to change with a pdf editor mm. Mm. then you can change people can change the background to whatever you like Mm -hmm. And with something like lecture notes for yeah. a, a, like a university course, that's so easy to do. Yeah. To just make it accessible as a PDF, yeah. it's yeah. not it's not like big leaps and bounds. No. It's just little changes that can really help, which is quite nice. Again, uh, the university have a dis disability access plan, mm. uh, uh, and part of that is I'm allowed lecture notes before lectures. Mm. Even if most lectures always do it nowadays, but even if they didn't, mm. I can say to a lecture, yeah. "I have this thing. You must give me notes." Okay. And then they should theoretically give me notes. You say theoretically. <laughs> there has been an incident. Oh, okay. yeah. The lecture is no longer in the yeah. I mean, there are instances where lecturers are still writing the notes. Which is understandable. Yeah. And, I, and I've always said to them, I don't mind if you just tell me if there's been an update. I'm very happy. I'm not going to take the final. Like, I'm not going to go to the exam and say, claim that I got, didn't write this definition on because it was in the original form of the lecture notes I had. Mm, yeah. I am very happy to, like, say that. And. Yeah. do that it's just i need access to notes even if they're wrong notes and i have to change notation during a like, lecture on a piece of paper because i i work best personally from annotated notes mm -hmm. so i don't copy down from a lecture board i like to have a printout and then like write oh yes lecture said this trick is useful here so if in the class i need to change you like make a note that this is wrong that's why i'm very happy to do that yeah, I started like annotating like printouts of lecture notes during like my third year or something. Yeah. And I feel like it was just way easier to it actually is. Like, engage with like what they're actually doing rather than trying to like mindlessly write down and not catch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I do feel yeah. like that's something I've done is like mindlessly write yeah. down and then it's like do you actually take anything in? Um but I think I just got so set in that like oh, really? that yeah. process of like I need to write everything down. Mm -hmm. But then I would always go back over my notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, something I started in first year of undergrad and then really regretted it afterwards because I'm like, now I don't have the time to rewrite all of my lecture notes, oh, but I've yeah. got to. Yeah, so again, try even if you're not dyslexic, but it's actually a lot better way I think of working. Mm. It also means you can do things like if a lecture has moved on and you still want to work out, you can then reread it. If a lecture is going slowly somewhere, you can skip ahead and read a bit further. Mm -hmm. If they're going, they went too fast and like you can go back, you can sort of engage with a lecture at your own speed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Way to win. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Cool. Mm. I don't know, is there anything else? Is there anything else? What, what time are we? Uh, it is 11 minutes past five. Ooh. Ooh. We can chat for a while. Yeah. 
Do you do any teaching? Uh, I've started tutoring this semester, and I've done Ooh. I've done personal tutoring for for A level and GCSE stuff privately. Okay. How do you find that? Uh, fine. <laughs> I like tutoring like A level and GCSE has been fine because mm -hmm. um, I haven't had an issue so far tutoring. But I did explain yeah. to him that I'm dyslexic. If I when I do stuff on the board, I tend to use abbreviations where as far as possible for stuff, um, mm -hmm. just because of it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, and like ask me or tell me if I've misspelled something or just be understanding the fact. I think when tutoring people undergrads, I think everyone is in the room is an adult, mm. therefore should be understanding of the fact if someone is mm. has something difficult. I've not had an issue but I've done one tutorial so far, so you'll keep the most hundred percent. And I think that's the thing, like if whenever I was undergrad it's like when you see greek letters for the first time like and everybody <laughs> writes them differently as well yeah so i think that's the thing like you just get a lecturer that would be going through some and they've just randomly introduced this squiggle yeah <laughs> and it's like you have not told me what this squiggle is mm. but if you all it takes is like you say yeah. if you abbreviate something all it takes is to go by the way this means this yeah and then people know but just to randomly write something even, illegible on the board. Even like fairly standard shorthand with like with respect to is w dot r yeah, dot t. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what that is, um, you can find out, can't yeah, you? Yeah. Um, Wolog, write lots of genuality. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes, I use that one. That yeah. one took me like a semester <laughs> to figure out in undergrad. I just wrote it down and like I was I, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. ask. I was like, I remember the first time I saw an eater, and I was like, what on earth is that? <laughs> My yeah. favourite is the Greek letters, which are like handwritten completely different to how they're typeset. Yes, yeah. Zeta needs to get in the bin, oh, yeah. and I will mm -hmm. die on that hill. Yeah, yeah. That was oh, you weren't you wouldn't have been here. We had like one of our lunchtime discussions oh, last oh, week. Yeah. Was um. About, <laughs> that was a week was, before. Oh, it was it? Yeah. Okay. So it was about writing Greek letters. Yeah. yeah. And we spent most of lunch just kind of comparing and trying to write different Greek yeah. letters, and be like, "How do you do it? Can we do this one? Can we do yeah?" And then people came in afterwards and they said, who slowly went insane in the social space because it was just a load of scribbles all over the table. To be fair, it did get worse because we were just like, at the end, just like spent 10 minutes trying to draw curly brackets That's in a different true. way. So the yeah. table was then yeah. just covered in curly brackets, <laughs> which looked like, even, looked like a bigger mental breakdown than it was initially. What's easier, the left curly bracket or the right curly bracket? And there is a right answer. The left. <laughs> the left. It's definitely the right. No. When you do it underneath. How do you draw it? Because I know some people start from the top and go I, down, but I just like start from the middle, go up, start from the middle, go down. The right one because I don't write it. <laughs> but then to be, I think a left one is used more than a right, so I probably have more practice at drawing the left one. Maybe. Yeah. Because you would use that for like if you've got a set of differential equations, I would do a left oh, curly bracket, and equations. then you don't close it with mm. like a. So I think I've just had more practice. Or if you just forget to close the brackets. Hmm. They started to look like zetas, so I'm gonna stop doing that now. <laughs> oh, no. That's why I did like my really, really so they're all curves, so it's like three curves connected mm. instead of like mm. Okay. I also agree that underline is much better than an over arrow. Oh don't Oh no. Four vectors. Oh yes, yeah, no. Yeah. Which module are you tutoring this semester? Analysis one B. Oh okay, you're fine. It's vectors and vector calculus for the undergrads. Yeah. I was taught to do it with a bar when, when when I did it, but it was always a bar underneath. Yeah. Mm. Someone changed it to an arrow. Oh, really? What, yeah. an arrow above. Above. Yeah. And I was like, I look like I respect the lecturer's choice. However, in my tutorials, <laughs> we're not doing that. Yeah. It's like it's just so I have nothing against arrows per se, but it's like when you can write one line, why write three? Mm. Yeah. Like. Have you ever done one where people do matrices as double underlined? Yes. Ooh. But I do that. I do Ooh. that. Because you can't write bold. You just do a capital letter. Like, all mm. matrices are capital letters. I just but don't... to me, a matrix mm. should be a bold capital letter. And I'm like, I can't do that. So it has to be, under it has to be double underlined. <laughs> You're just scribbling in your notes <laughs> to make it bold. You just have a sharpie with just a matrix. <laughs> yeah, I think... Oh, things... Tilda well, underneath. Yeah, but Tilda that was, underneath. what, how long ago? <laughs> <laughs> that's 
times have changed since I don't then. think I even like acknowledge vectors now. <laughs> it's just like a letter It's X. like I know it's a vector. Yeah, so you know, infer. <laughs> yeah. I think if, if you if it's in your own notes, then it's like, yeah, fine. But I feel like even well maybe it's like in my corner because like everything's a vector or a matrix. Yeah. yeah. You just like yeah. stop so the whole notation. Mm-hmm. I do I try to be good. I I does slip occasionally if I've gone like into a calculation and then mm-hmm. I forget about it. But in fluids you have a lot of like scalars and vector yeah. stuff. But then, so then the thing is, I will, when I'm writing, I will do an underline for a vector. But then if I type it up in LaTeX, I do it bold. Yeah, if you're typing it, you always do it bold. You don't yeah. underline it. So, in yeah, if, if I'm, ty- if it, if I'm oh. typesetting, if you're typesetting it, it you vectors get... and matrices are bold font. Yes. But, but if I, I'm writing, I do it underlines. I custom command, so it's still backslash vec. And then, ah, okay. so I, I yes. switch that too. So yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's back, it's back <laughs> to that. Any Hardman just slash math bf. Is that well, math? I want you to count. <laughs> sorry, I want you to count the number of letters you have to type. Yeah, but don't you have don't what do you use to do tech in? Because mine has autocomplete. Oh, and if you do it in VS Code, it just completes it for you. Mine just like is autocomplete, but then it never gives me math BF as like an yeah. option. The VS Code LaTeX editor is smart. It will give you your most common stuff as your oh, autocomplete. Okay. I'll try. Mm. It's so ingrained in my macros now, but I have things like var e rather than var epsilon and like mm. omega instead of <laughs> omega with a lowercase. <laughs> Whoa, omega. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. I do it in my code as well, and my supervisor is very disappointed in me. But like, that's a different. <laughs> A different, a different conversation. <laughs> How many questions from chat? Anyone got a, a conversation? Uh, what have we got? Oh, uh, vector who's moving on standard, but standards underline underline with a half the unit. Yes, that's that's the correct mm-hmm. one. Uh, yeah, it's mostly just going to descend into a notation thing. I kind of want to oh. make you guys try writing <laughs> Greek letters now, just to oh. see what you do. Nope. What, what, are you, what are your opinions on doing like this is probably a fluid dynamics thing, but with like differential respect to x as prime as opposed to like something else? If so, you're working in one D and it's with respect to time, then I don't. Then care. it's a dot. With oh, respect to no, time, true. it's always a dot. With yeah. respect to x, it's a prime. I never use that then. Yeah, I always, oh, no, I, I, I always. Do I? I always would use subscript, subscript x or subscript x x. I'll, yeah, if it's if it's a single valued function, so like if it's just f of x, and that's it, I'll I will use a prime actually. Yeah. Um. If. <laughs> How do you cut a bagel, Henry? Oh God, no. <laughs> Horizontally or vertically? It was a no. I cut. It was a question about <laughs> what? We <laughs> did. <laughs> 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 I think it's still drawn of a maths PhD David upstairs. Yeah. yeah, it's like so we were saying about the bagels cut in half. Yeah, and Henry said which way. <laughs> it, it, well, so, this was in reference to. Yeah, but, but like, I guess like, like, no, it's no, like, no, 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 normally, yeah. like, no, no, normally, like normal, like if I was to have like a bagel sandwich, you obviously cut it in half. Like, but I get, I get why it's like if yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. presented with a bagel yeah. with no filling. Because I why the, you were like which yeah. way? Yeah, because I was like, oh, they like when we talk when you were talking, I was like, oh, they did like. Bagel, like open bagels. They did do pizza bagels ah. last That's what I sort of was yeah. thinking you were talking about. No, so they did a, pe- a bagel sandwich. Yes, then cut. And then cut that in half. Yes. So it's <laughs> half of a bagel sandwich rather than a bagel half of a sandwich. Yeah. Like the brackets, order of operations <laughs> matter. <laughs> like, wait, it was half. How the fuck do you spell sandwich? <laughs> Sand. Is is which like the hat, right? No, without the. T- you you just spell it in any way. Google, Google for someone who's terrible at spelling. I know that Google tra- <laughs> yeah. Google is very good at <laughs> understanding what you mean. OBS is less so. That that is what I mean. Just to spoil the illusion of who's on the behind Don't the Close research. your brackets. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon yeah. Sandwich. <laughs> yes. No, that was too uh, many. Oh. Yeah. Okay. On a more serious note, we do actually have an actual question in chat that we can answer. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Um, so, interview advice for um, general PhDs, but I suppose PhDs. Specific, yeah, specifically <laughs> um, astrophysics, but STEM. So, yeah. I suppose, yeah, we can provide. Yeah. I think know about the department and the course and mm-hmm. people. So, if it's like an actual, like, if it's like just with a supervisor, actually know about that supervisor's research. I mean, like some like fairly, s- what I would consider like 
basic stuff is just know about the institution, know about the course, yeah. know about the department. Um, you don't need to like. I don't. It depends on how technical. If it's a technical interview, then you need to be mm. able to do things technically. Mm. Mm. The sound, but I know the sound is not a technical interview. Um, and I have done technical interviews in the past. I think be prepared. Also, just back, just be confident and back yourself. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think just being confident can go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do think it's. I agree with it being important, like to the research around the actual like. Know, like people and like university yeah. you're going to mm. like it's important that you get across that it's important that you're going to like to this university that you want to go to this one rather than just doing like a general PhD somewhere mm -hmm. yeah and I think that was a good the thing is like you can distract an academic really really well <laughs> by asking them to talk about their research so it's like if you're in an interview and it seems weird to sort of turn the tables but like if you've done your research like you say you look at the department you search for who's interviewing you and what they do yeah. mm. if you ask them about like or say like oh i saw that you do such and such and maybe you're interested in that then honestly you could just derail the entire yeah. thing then they would talk i do um, have one bit of interview advice the question I always I will always ask in an interview is how if you have any advice for someone starting because you always ask a question yeah, and my default yeah. question is if you had any advice for somebody starting what advice would it be? Mm. That's what I always that's, ask. Yeah, that's good, and I think that's another good point as well. Like, or you you should ask questions yeah. because then they know that you're interested and you're taking it seriously. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. It, and ask what you want to know about yeah. as well. Um, Another good, like, sneaky one is ask if they have any current PhD students that you could get in contact with. Yeah, definitely. Because um, the best way to know what a supervisor is going to be like is by asking their current students mm -hmm. or someone that's worked with them. And if they won't give you someone that they've already worked with to give a good reference for a supervisor... They're probably not. It's probably not a good yeah. supervisor. Yeah. Which I guess that, that only works if it is if you're going for an interview with a specific academic that you've yeah. applied to do a PhD with. But I guess here in Samba you won't necessarily be in, be interviewed by people that could be your super, like might be your supervisor. Mm. But with Samba you have a year to yeah. ask yeah, other definitely. PhD um, people about But I think yeah. 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 Mm. Just don't talk to any PhD student that's currently the youngest and wants to stay that way because they might tell you the fuck around. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> I would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many PhD interviews did you guys end up doing? Oh no. Two. So we're probably not <laughs> the best people to ask. Like, <laughs> right, like it was, I, I just I described as one and a half. <laughs> I did an interview with Sam and I one like I had a meeting with a guy doing the supervisor mm -hmm. project, okay. and I sort of chatted to him about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I've done I've done interviews for other things. So I've got like general interview advice. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> no. I yeah, I only I didn't apply for I think I made did four applications. Mm -hmm. Um and then so three of those were for CDTs. I got offered an interview at Warwick, but by that point I'd already accepted Samba. Okay. So I was like, well, obviously I'm not gonna go and put myself through that when I've already accepted the place here. Okay. And then I got an offer from Durham without that was not a CDT though, this was just for a straight PhD okay. with an academic. And they offered me a place without inviting me to interview. Wait, really? Yeah, and I was like, wait, have I missed a step? Like, did I do the interview in my sleep or something? <laughs> like, what? Um, so I was really confused, but very flattered. Um, yeah. But I didn't, know, I didn't know that was normal. Like, I assumed even for mm -hmm. a kind of standalone PhD okay. with a single academic, you'd have to go for an interview. If so. they already have the funding. Mm. Um, so the way that general PhDs can work is either a supervisor has a pot of money, at which point as soon as they find someone that they like for that project, they yeah. can be like, yep, yeah, you're in. Yeah. But if you have to compete for the funding with other supervisors with other unis uh, within the, mm. the university, so mm. say a department gets three PhD positions, sure. yeah. supervisors will pick a person mm -hmm. and then that project with that person will fight for one of the three spaces. Yes, yeah. So um, it varies. I'd also say just generally interview advice, just be relaxed. Mm. Which is like easier said. Yeah, just, just, just like, relax. Okay, obviously you're gonna be nervous. Just just be yeah. Yeah. It's something I always tell the Samba interviewees that come here is that they're ch like you said we've we've had a couple in today that we've sort of like sat tour. with over lunch and took on a tour round and you said to them it's like just it's basically a just a vibe check. 
<laughs> and it's like it is though because they want to see it's about how you're going to gel with your supervisor if they're the one doing the interview and if they've got other students or they know what the department is like as a group yeah. as a yeah. social group they're just checking whether it's like are you going to fit in do they yeah. think that you're friendly and yeah, yeah. so I think if you be yourself and you come across yeah. yeah well that's half the job done the two types of interviews technical and vibe check yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, technical interview, you just need to be confident that you're good. Also, be I think, especially if it's a difficult technical interview, mm. admitting that you don't know, yeah. or mm. I think can go a long way to just, instead of like being silent or just coming up with something they know is, like, you know is wrong, they know is wrong. Yeah. yeah. I think just saying, I think I can do this, I'm not sure. And like, or, yeah, just say, yeah. Being, like you say, being honest, like, I'm not entirely sure how this works, or my understanding is this, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I've yeah. only just briefly learned about this. Yeah. Or, yeah. I think mean, humility is a lot of times good. Mm. And like showing, and then because a lot of times technical interviews, from my understanding, are set up to not be necessarily doable. They're actually wanting to see how you learn and can like interact and solve a problem mm. cooperatively. Particularly if there's a PhD one with your potential supervisor, mm -hmm. the supervisor is also wanting to check that you know you can work with them to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. like attempt to work with them to solve a problem even if they know the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of technical, just because I've absolutely hated all of my technical interviews, um, I found that doing it mental maths in front of someone put me on the spot a lot. Mm. Like how specifically with this like I've only I've, own, I've only had issues. one technical interview mm. before um and it wasn't it wasn't a very difficult one. Um mm. it was a it was for like undergrad at York and York essentially like come to an interview and make your grade easy. It was more the fact they wanted to just get people to have a tour of the university. Oh, okay. mm. Um and I really struggled in that mm. but that was my first like proper interview for anything so mm. Mm. Um, it's I don't know I'm not I'm not ever actually done I know like Father Oxford and came to applications to have one. <laughs> yeah. um, I went to exactly the same thing at York though, and I yeah I remember yeah I think they gave me some kind of it was so we 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 would have been like year twelve at the time like first year of A levels and I remember them giving me something that I would learn like the next year yeah so it's like they gave me something that was A level but you, they knew you hadn't seen yet yeah and I knew I just got it completely wrong but then it's more about like how you go about it mm -hmm. and then if they give you a hint it's so they're not looking for you to get to yeah. the right answer it's like if they give you the next step it's like how do you then sort of assess that information and then get to the next step after that and mm -hmm. they want to see how you think rather than yeah it's yeah. okay to be wrong it's okay to ask for additional help yeah I think. yeah um, i personally think technical interviews can get in the bin but that's just my opinion yeah <laughs> it, de it, de it depends on what point of view the person asks you. Like, if the interview is coming, the person doing it is coming from a position like of a pace of good faith of posing a very difficult problem to see how you think, mm. it's very, very different to like, oh, you got it wrong, so you're not getting an interview. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a big misunderstanding. I enjoy Elijah's comment very <laughs> yeah. much. That's quite funny. Yeah. Did Did you learn in the interview? So as I heard that as well. Turns out they gave me stuff I would have learned that day had I not had the interview. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like the irony. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you bring it up, just be like, yeah, I actually learned that in like Oxford or wherever you were interviewing. Just do it for Matt's film. Like the proof is too large to be contained in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> actually gonna leave that for the reader. Yeah, <laughs> ah, okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Thomas, you're gonna be fine in your interview. Don't worry about it. Just breathe and don't swear or cry, and you should have better luck than me. Take a bottle of water with you if you Ooh, if yeah. you're stuck. I would argue if you cry again, that could do you some favors. No, because I cried in both Oxford once, and that didn't work. It's only Susie that let me. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, take take a bottle of water with you if you're stressed if, or can't think. Use yeah. taking a sip from your water bottle as a. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If one of the interviews is at Bath, then cry because that might help. <laughs> Well, yeah, no. we're clearly a bunch of... <laughs> <laughs> we're very sympathetic down here, it's fine. <laughs> we're just going to get in and have a conversation at the end of the stream. We're going we're gonna to turn the camera off and there's going to be an email being like, stop it. <laughs> stop <laughs> telling people to cry to get into uni. It's fine. If, if Thomas is doing like astrophysics, then he won't be interviewing for Samba. This is true. <laughs> Unless he wants to, he should definitely apply for Samba. Everyone should apply for Samba. There's lots of physicists in Samba. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it tends to be one per cohort that did physics. And the rest. <laughs> Token physicists. Yeah. yeah. We had three. I think 
Two and a half? Three? Way more than one, yeah. Okay, you average out our cohort then. I don't yeah. think we've got any physicists. I don't know who's uh, physics from me. El- Andre. Sam. You've got Elson. Oh, yeah, but he's, yeah, not Samba, but yeah. He's close enough. Yeah. Because mm. um, we have. Mm. I thought you did like a mix with like, maths and physics. We have one from our cohort. Fair. Yeah, everyone's welcome. They should join Samba. Link somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You're meant to be in charge here. I'm just fine. I'm, is it just samba.ac.uk? I don't know. I'm not sure. We're going to find out. Now. If, if you Google samba bar. No, I'm just yeah. going to type the link in chat and hope it works. <laughs> oh, brave. Yeah. Yay. Well, and then see somewhere. if you can find the cat on the photo. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> Wait, are we all in it? Yeah, we yeah, should I'll be. be yeah, I'll be in it. Yeah. I think we're like looking at each other yes. I think. Yeah, because they said like do something cute do something silly and then me and Seb yeah. looked at each other like what do we do <laughs> yeah. and I was like yes this yeah. is a picture of me or you I think the silly one I'm just stood there confused and scared because <laughs> 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 like the first day of like Sam like set, like one of the early days yeah. and like I didn't really know anyone was past so I didn't want to do anything so like anything that would embarrass myself I've got over that now it was going to happen sooner or later so that's fine that is the right link. It's samba.ac.uk. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There we Panic go. over. <laughs> yeah. Shall we go? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are we, are we wrapping okay. up all together? Or? Uh, should we jump to a... We can have a little break. Kick me out. Yeah. <laughs> so I can, can stand by the window. Oh no, it's like yeah. the interview. This was an interview. <laughs> <laughs> we did tell you. We warned you earlier. Aww. It's like oh, wow. <laughs> so. What makes you think you'd be a good application for science? <laughs> no. It's actually a year today. I've been to you. Really? It was. It was a first. I remember it being the first Wednesday one back after in semester break. Aww. Because I had like one early and I had like exams around there. So like, oh, yeah. you just want to come to Wednesday? So it's. It's a year since I had my sound interview today. Aww. Well, like, not today, like, my, yeah. minus, plus or minus two days in some direction. So we know which guests we're getting on in a year's time, then. <laughs> You're going to have an interview on this day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like Groundhog Day. Yeah. We need to make it a thing, though, now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been... Seriously wants to know what Ooh. additional activities does Henry do besides his PhD? You got any hobbies? So I like fun? I like the video games. <laughs> the video games? Mm. What uh, video games do you like? Uh, League of Legends. Ooh. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> um, recently, done some reading. Mm-hmm. Been to the pub a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. No. <laughs> no comment. We do not condemn you. Are you excited about the Six Nations? Not with having them to play. <laughs> Role Henry plays like in what context? Oh, in league. I, oh, in league. Okay. Mostly okay. jungle. I mostly play over nowadays. I hope that made sense to whoever was listening. <laughs> I know jungle. I know jungle. Like yeah. welcome to the or. It's just like an area. Yeah, you, in, you don't the game, so yeah. rumble in oh, there. Yeah, so yeah. You get some coins. Or there's like different there. lanes. So you have a top lane, mid, mid lane, bottom lane. And bottom lane. There's two people, and there's a jungle that goes between all the lanes. Ganking. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you us back from Twitch. Like, okay. And on that note, that conversation can happen at a later date. If you have any other conversa- like questions about League of Legends, we can DM one of our private channels, and we'll we'll be sure to pass them. Or on. We, we can put you in touch with Henry. Yeah. yeah. Like, Do you have any socials that you want us to plug? No. No. Fine. Cool. <laughs> you can you can just DM us at behind the research. Our social media is our best. If you could do that. A little bit lower. Can I, wait, where Beth, am I, I can't can I see the... Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. All of our socials are down there. That's not... Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is not your Thank many you fingers. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work when the, the thing is on a delay. And I'm like, I can't see it in a long time. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. Okay. You did great. Okay. Um, yeah, follow us on all those and you can ask questions about League of Legends, I guess. Please don't. <laughs> I'm not good. We, yeah. we can't guarantee that we will answer them. But we can You'll try. get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> an answer. Um, but yeah, it's been lovely yeah, it's been having enjoyable. you. Yeah, thanks having so much chat. for sort of talking to yeah. us about yeah. your dyslexia as well. Uh, we really appreciate you. Yeah, sort of thank, thanks for having me on. Any time. Yeah. <laughs> I can derail. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a conversation tangentially related to maps. Yeah. Yeah. Then I guess yeah. we will see you guys in a little bit.
We're not ending yeah, the stream. We're, we're going to a VRB screen. BRB. Don't leave. Okay. <laughs> yeah, listen to Kat. <laughs> like, we, we, you just said what we said, but a lot angrier. Yeah, because yeah. everyone's like, nice stream. Well okay. Done. okay, okay. They're trying to leave. They're not allowed to leave. Nothing's <laughs> leaving. You're not leaving. Forever. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, we'll be seen again. We'll be back in two. See you shortly.